Welcome to the 360 degree tour of the two stage light gas gun facility here at the University of Kent. My name is Dr. Catherine Harris and I'm a planetary science researcher here at the University of Kent and it's my privilege to give you the tour of the light gas gun facility today. So what I want you to do is take your time, have a look around as I'm giving you the tour at the various aspects and take in the whole scale of this lab. So, two stage light gas gun. What this actually does is accelerate projectiles to high speeds, and we're talking between 0.5 to about 7.5 kilometers a second. The reason we do this is to try and recreate the kind of impacts and collisions that are occurring out in the solar system between different asteroids, different planets, and also between the particle grains and spacecraft, which can be a major problem. So, it's called a two-stage light gas gun because it's made up of two stages. The first of which is here, and the second down there. The first stage is more akin to a normal gun, where it uses a shotgun shell cartridge, which is actually full of rifle powder, but with no shot or bullet inside. Our projectile is further down. This actually sits inside this part right here. And is ignited when we swing a pendulum to hit a firing pin, similar to how a gun fires. Now, the energy from our shotgun cartridge being ignited is what propels our piston. Now, this is our piston, and it actually sits at this point here within what we call the pump tube. The energy from our shotgun cartridge uh, being ignited propels our piston down our pump tube and that is what kicks off the second stage. So to discuss that further, let's go and have a look. So this is the second part of our two-stage light gas gun. But before we really discuss that, I want to show you where our projectile is sat. Our projectile sits at this point here, at the start of the launch tube. Now we have the pump tube here and the launch tube, which are connected by a central breach. Our projectile sits in a white sabot, and this is actually a four-way scarding sabot, which means that as it fires down, the sabot segments fly away, and our projectile stays on track all the way down to the target chamber behind you. Now, this gun actually allows us to fire a multitude of different things at a multitude of different targets. We have the ability to fire rock, metal, tiny samples of dust, tiny samples of different minerals, and also ice. Today, we're going to be firing a glass sphere about 1.5 millimeters in diameter, and we're going to hit a ice sphere, which is trying to recreate an impact into a moon like Enceladus, which is theorized to have an icy shell and a subsurface ocean. So we'll have another look at that when we go down to the target in a moment. So that's where our sabot is sat, waiting to be accelerated. At this point, between the launch tube and the pump tube, we have our burst disk. Now, this is just an aluminum disk which sits between the two. It is this disk which allows us to actually accelerate our projectile up to these speeds. So how does that happen? I've discussed the first stage with you, where our piston is sat here and is pushed down from the energy from our shotgun. We actually, within the pump tube, this is where our light gas is held at a pressure of about 45 bar for the speeds that we're looking for. So it's actually pumped in through this system here until the whole system is at 45 bar. Then, as this piston propels down the pump tube, it compresses this gas. And when that gas reaches a pressure high enough, the burst disk will rupture forming a hole, and through that hole, this compressed gas will accelerate through 
and it is this acceleration and release of the gas through our burst disk which actually propels our projectile. So, we now have a case of our piston has moved down here, our projectile has shot off down our uh, range towards the target chamber behind you. Excuse me. It is at this point here that the next stage occurs. So at this point, we have our fragments of our sabo, which have flown apart, and our projectile has gone boom, straight down. We need to stop those segments of those uh, sabo segments. And to do that, we use a stop plate. Now, this is a thick bit of stainless steel. And you can see on the surface, there's some rather large dents. These are what are created by the sabo impacting our stop plate. And you can see there's a hole in the center. That is where our projectile goes through cleanly and down our range. And this all sits at this point. So it's all very well, our projectile's gone down, we're very happy, but we need to know the speed. And to do that, we use these two lasers. Now these lasers point down and are known distance apart. And we have some very sensitive equipment here, which we can actually use to tell when our projectile passes through both these lasers. So we know our time, we know our distance, and therefore we can work out our speed. So, that's what these two uh, lasers do here. Here's the chicken. Remember that for later, it's very important. So, our projectile has now gone down our range. Let's go and have a look at the target and see what's going to occur in the target chamber. So, this is the target chamber. And inside, ready to go, is our ice sphere target which simulates a Europa-like body, which is a icy surface with a subsurface ocean. So that's all ready to go. We've already done alignment to check that our projectile will hit it. So we shall close it up. We now evacuate the whole range down to about 50 millibar when we will then be ready to shoot. Now this chamber, is nice and big, which means we can actually fire at a multitude of targets, including ice, rock, metal. And we also can film our impacts using high-speed cameras. This allows us to investigate different aspects of the impact itself, such as where the different fragments fly off to, and also something called a light flash, which is the point of impact when light is emitted. Very exciting. So, guns ready to go. Let's head back to the other end. So, the gun and the target are now ready to fire. So, what we'd actually do is leave the room and lock all the doors and do a countdown. Three, two, one. Press the red button and then fire the gun. And the way that happens is that the pendulum swings down and strikes the firing pin. You may have been surprised that there's not a loud bang. The only thing you actually hear is the sound of that pendulum striking the firing pin. So, once the gun has been shot, we need to clean it and prepare it for the next shot itself. So, thank you very much. If you want any more information, you can contact us on Twitter at Kent Impact Group or send us an email at impacts at kent.ac.uk.